There are many different types of high energy particle accelerators that exist. Now, one of the earliest high energy particle accelerators that was developed was known as the cyclotron, which we already spoke about in great detail. So, the cyclotron basically consists of two semicircular D shaped vacuum chambers that contain a magnetic field that keeps our particle moving in a circular fashion. Now, between our two D shaped vacuum chambers, we contain a region of space that has a variable voltage source. And this variable voltage source creates an electric field that accelerates that particle. Now, the electric field changes every half a, cy a cycle, change direction every half a cycle to keep that particle accelerating because the particle change direction also every half a cycle. Now, the cyclotron is only really able to accelerate our particles to velocities that aren't that high. So the velocities aren't very close to the speed of light and that's because when the velocities are low, our particles radius of curvature does not depend on the velocity. So basically the frequency does not depend on our velocity. So once again, for low energy the frequency of a particle is equal to the frequency of the voltage source and this is known as the cyclotron frequency. So the cyclotron for this reason is not able to actually accelerate the velocity, accelerate our particle to a high velocity. However, what happens if, if we want to accelerate that particle to a very high velocity? Well, as the velocity increases, the energy increases and at high energies, the frequency and the radius of curvature of the particle becomes dependent on the relativistic energy of that particle on the relativistic velocity. So that's exactly why we need to build a different type of accelerator to accommodate for this relationship. And we build the Synco cyclotron. Now, the single cyclotron is a cyclotron that takes into account the relationship between our cyclotron frequency and the relativistic velocity or energy of that particle. So, this device basically uses a variable voltage source that changes its frequency to accommodate of the decrease in frequency of our particle when the velocity increases. So basically, in this particle accelerator, the frequency of the variable voltage source remained constant. And that's because the velocity wasn't great enough for the special theory of relativity to take into effect. So, however, when the velocity increases, the frequency becomes as follows. So, in this case, for the cyclotron, the frequency is equal to QB divided by 2 pi m. However, in the case of the single cyclotron, when the velocity is very high, the frequency is equal to QB divided by 2 pi multiplied by m multiplied by this factor we call gamma. And gamma is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So what this factor basically tells us is the following. As the particle is accelerating and the velocity increases to a velocity that is very close to the speed of light, then the, the, the denominator term basically becomes a value that is no longer 1. And so the gamma term increases and that means the relativistic mass of the particle also increases. So as the particle accelerates, its mass begins to increase. The relativistic mass begins to increase and we see from this equation when the denominator increases, the frequency begins to decrease. As the 
frequency decreases, the radius of curvature of our particle begins to increase. So that means that if the frequency is decreasing to accommodate for that decrease in frequency, what the synchrocyclotron does is it decreases the frequency of the variable voltage source. Now let's move on to a different type of high energy particle accelerator that basically also takes, it takes into account the relationship between the decrease in frequency and the increase in velocity. So this is known as the synchrotron. So basically, as we'll see in just a moment, what the synchrotron does is instead of increasing or instead of decreasing the frequency of the variable voltage source, the variable voltage source frequency is constant, but the magnetic field is increased. <coughs> so. The synchrotron consists of a large circular device that allows particles to travel around the circumference of a circular loop by using magnets. So basically we can imagine that we have a circular loop with a certain circumference and along the circumference of the circle that has a certain radius of curvature r, we have these conductors that have, that have magnets. So actually these aren't conductors, they're simply semicircular tubes that contain magnets. And these magnets create a magnetic field B that keeps our particle moving in a circular fashion. Now the magnets, or between the magnets, we have gaps. And inside these gaps we have electric fields shown by the green arrows that accelerate and increase the velocity of those particles. So basically the magnets are separated by gaps where electric fields are used to accelerate the particles. Now, when the velocity of the particle begins to increase to a very high value close to the speed of light, we see from this equation that the relativistic mass begins to increase and the frequency begins to increase or decrease. As the frequency begins to decrease, what would happen is the radius of curvature of the particle would begin to decrease and if nothing is done, the particle will basically hit the walls of, of one of our magnets. Now to basically keep that from happening, we have to keep the frequency constant so that the radius of curvature is also constant. Now to keep this constant, as our relativistic mass increases, we can increase the magnetic field B, which appears in the numerator term by the same factor. And in fact, that's exactly what we do in a synchrotron. So to account for the decrease in frequency as the velocity gets higher and higher, the magnetic field strength is continually increased to keep the cyclotron frequency constant. So this increases when the velocity becomes higher and higher, so we increase the magnetic field over time by the same factor to keep the cyclotron frequency constant. So in the cyclotron, the frequency of our voltage source, the variable voltage source, does not change. Rather, we change the magnetic field. But in the single cyclotron, the magnetic field remains constant, but we change our frequency frequency of oscillation of that variable voltage source. So the cyclotron frequency is allowed to decrease and as that takes place the frequency of the voltage source also decreases. In this case the voltage source frequency does not decrease and the cyclotron frequency also does not decrease. Now, let's move on to the linear accelerator. So this is diagrammed in this section. We basically have a location, our source, where we create or begin accelerating our particles. Now the particles, in such a case, have charge. They're charged particles such as electrons or ions. So the particles with the charge are accelerated linearly through a series of conductors. We have conductor 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now the conductors contain a variable voltage source that changes electric field directions to keep the particle <coughs> accelerating. <coughs> 
So let's suppose we have an electron that begins in this position. So as it begins to accelerate initially, this side of the conductor has a positive sign, has a positive sign, this side has a negative sign. So the electron basically moves from the positive to the negative. It's attracted by the positive sign. However, as it gets close to the negative sign, if we keep the negative as it is, that electron will be slow down as a result of the electric repulsive force. So basically to keep that from happening we change the polarity and we make this negative and this positive. And so the electron is allowed to accelerate along these tubular conducting sections. Now notice since initially the velocity of the particle is low, our distance, our length of the conductor is also small. But as the velocity increases we need to increase the length of our conductor because our object, the particle, travels a longer distance over the same time period. So once again, since the initial velocity is low, the tubular conductors are short, but as the velocity increases, they are made longer and longer. So that when the particle exits this region, it has a high velocity and carries a great enough energy.